the U.S. Matific Math Games are coming this February. Stay tuned at the end of the show to learn how you can have free access to the full Matific platform and your school can enter to win up to $50,000 in cash and prizes all while your kids learn about math. Five formative assessment strategies to help with classroom management. Episode 250. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. Today, we're talking with Mike Roberts, eighth grade English teacher in Salt Lake City, Utah, and author of Hacking Classroom Management, How to Be the Type of Teacher They Make Movies About. Now, Mike, you have five ideas for us today to do formative assessment, but these are also strategies that help with classroom management. So give us the first one and help us understand how great formative assessment can help us better manage our classroom. Yeah, like anything else in our classroom, I think we have to take a variety of approaches in how we do our formative assessments. I think a lot of us fall back on the thumbs up, thumbs down, or the fist to five concept, which, you know, I think is is good. Uh, But I think the more engaged you can get your students in that process and and really get them to think about the learning rather than just respond to it, I think that helps uh, keep classroom management a lot more interactive for the students and a lot more uh, engaging for them throughout the class. What's the first example? First example, real easy one. I call them high five hands. On their way out the door, I just have some hands up on my door. And this is a good one for self-assessment. I think a lot of times teachers don't think self-assessment can play a role in formative assessment. And I will sometimes ask students to critique themselves with their effort today, or uh, we'll have a learning target for the day. And I'll say, okay, assess how you did on that learning target today. And there's a green hand, a yellow hand, and a red hand. And they'll just real informally as they walk out, just high five that on the way out. You could also use emojis if you wanted to, put some big old emoji faces up there. And I also sometimes use this as a prior knowledge assessment as they're walking out. You know, if we're going to be talking about irony the next day in my class, I'll say, okay, Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about irony. Slap your hand up there and let me know what your thoughts are on how you feel about irony. And that way, when they come into class the next day, I have an idea of where the conversation should be going. If I'm seeing a lot of kids slap the, the red hand, I know, OK, I got to start this you know, down low. If a lot of kids have already slapped the green hand, though, I know they may have some background on it. Oh, fantastic. Love it. OK, what's your second? That first one was what I call a one minute assessment. And now I'm going to go into a couple five minute assessments. These are assessments that you can do either as an exit ticket, you can do it as an entry ticket, or you can do it sometime just in the middle of class. I'm a big fan on of summarizing and using literacy in the classroom. Two of my favorites are a Twitter summary where students have to summarize what they have learned in used to be 140, but now it's 280 characters. And I require them to include a hashtag or two in there. And th- this is where you really find out which kids get it and which kids don't. Those kids who are nailing their hashtags, it is unbelievable how cool it is when you see that kid really think through what they've learned and come up with this hashtag that just that just hits it right on the nail. Can you give me an example of what that would say with a hashtag and, and how you would know? We did one on Lord of the Flies a couple of years ago, and this kid was really going through, and I had him summarize, I think it was chapter 11, and it's a uh, chapter where a big rock falls on a kid, and their hashtag was hashtag watch for falling rocks. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it was really cool to see them think through, and they didn't just, they didn't just go through. They tied something that from their life into the reading, and it, it was really cool to see something like that play out. Um, the other one that I really like for the little five-minute assessment is what I call the haiku review, where students summarize or review the learning target for the day in a haiku format. So five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. I know a lot of you are like, my students would not do that. Uh-huh. They will, I promise. And it's really fun to see them like counting out syllables. You see them like patting their hand or tapping their jaw. And again, you get these these kids who might be quiet or, or might not be that engaged. And here's their chance to kind of share some of that creativity. And in both of these, I call them a five minute assessment, but I always like to have them presented as well. So you might want to add a little five minute extra on the back end of both of those. Awesome. Okay, what's our fourth? Then we go into what I call 15 minute assessments. And a big part of classroom management, I think 
stems from the fact that students just sit all day long and they sit in their one class and they come to the next class and they sit in that class and they get a little break here and there, but there's just a lot of sitting. So I'm a big fan of incorporating a lot of movement into my uh, classroom management approach. And so for these quick assessments, I do what's called a walk and talk rather than sitting up and having a, a lecture or even a discussion where they're in small groups and things like that, we will leave the classroom and we'll go walk around the neighborhood. So I will give them a question and they will pair up. And so we'll have a big old line on the sidewalk and we'll start walking. And, you know, you set this up with here are the requirements and here are the parameters and here's your expectations. So they know all this. So I ask that question and then they just start walking discussing this. And this is a great formative assessment because I'm just kind of hanging out in the middle, walking up and down. And all I'm really listening for with each question are a couple key words. And if they're saying those key words, then I'm feeling pretty confident that they're getting this concept. And walk and talks are great because it gets them out moving. Anytime you can leave the classroom, it's a, a fun thing for kids. and They really get excited about it. If you're not quite ready to leave your classroom, another one that I would throw in there would be what I call musical chairs. Again, they're in their small groups, but they'll discuss a question and then I'll play music for about 15 or 20 seconds and then they'll walk around randomly. And when the music stops, they sit down and then discuss uh, the next question. And again, my role as a teacher in that is I'm just listening for those, those key words, seeing which kids are really engaged, seeing which kids are passionate about it, which questions I, I missed the target on. Sometimes I'll ask a question, it'll just be super quiet, so that one falls on me. And then the last one is what I call a vocab story. And again, this one incorporates a little more literacy into it. You know, you're going through your class, you're throwing out some key vocab words, some key concepts, and I'll just write five or six up on the board. And I'll say, all right, I need you to write me a story incorporating these words into your story. And so for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, they'll just write a story about whatever they want. And again, you really get to see which kids get it by how they're using those words and, and how they incorporate those words, whether it's in their everyday lives or in something we're doing in school, um, how they manipulate the word. You get a, a really good understanding of are they getting that concept without, you know, smacking them on the, the summative assessment. I, like I said earlier, I think there's a lot of different ways that we teach. And I think our, our formative assessments should should do something in, in those same line where, you know, you give that, that active kid the chance to move. You give that quiet kid that chance to show their artistic talent and just try to throw out as many different uh, options as possible. So, Mike, what's one thing you wish that every teacher understood about doing formative assessment right? That there is no one size fits all. It's a lot like teaching. Like I said, the thumbs up, thumbs down. I, I think a lot of us fall back on that. Every time I've done a thumbs up, thumbs down, I think it's like 85% give the thumbs up. And I really, as much as I'd like to think I'm that great of a teacher, I don't think, you know, 85% of these kids have this mastered. I think that's just the easy approach. And I think a lot of us like to say, well, look, I did a formative assessment and they, they said, you know, they were, they were understanding it rather than letting them show you that they understand it rather than taking a, a passive role in the process. Let your students take an active role in the, the formative assessment process. And I totally agree with that because when my formative assessment really started informing my teaching, I did it with binary numbers. Used to, I would do a thumbs up, thumbs down. The kids would say, yeah, I get it or I don't. And I would quickly understand that they totally did not understand. They just wanted to move ahead. <laughs> they yeah. just they just didn't want to do it anymore because they thought it was too hard. But when I actually started seeing, OK, let's do some problems and let's do a quick formative assessment to actually know what their answer is, then it was like, OK, now we're really getting somewhere. These are some great tips. We will be doing a book giveaway, Hacking Classroom Management. Uh, check the show notes also for a link so you can. Find out more information um, from Mike Roberts. And I love linking together formative assessment with effective classroom management because they really do go together. And if you do a formative assessment and your kids aren't engaged in the formative assessment, then you, you really need to look at everything, don't you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things about the book is I know a lot of schools differ in how much technology they have. So I try to incorporate ideas that anybody can use. You know, regardless of whether you're a kindergarten teacher or 12th grade teacher, you have tons of technology or limited technology. These are just good strategies to, to help get your kids engaged in, in what's going on. So remarkable teachers, remember, we need to be checking for understanding pretty often 15 to 20 minutes at least uh, in our class period, two to three times a class period if you have a 50 minute period like I do. So let's do this. Let's be remarkable. Let's be amazing teachers.
Try Matific Free Now and participate in their math games at coolcatteacher.com forward slash math. Now, Matific is a fantastic site full of math manipulatives, customized playlists of activities to help students at every level master math. This fun gamified site is one I've been recommending for years. Now, the Matific games are here. Your students in the United States can compete to win prizes for themselves and your school as they gather stars by completing math activities. Sign up now for the Matific Games at coolcatteacher.com forward slash math. Setup is easy. Just send them your class rosters and they'll set you up in 24 hours. This is a great way to try out Matific. Help your kids boost and study math and have fun at the same time. Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.